This is CBC Here and Now. You are watching the Kitchener Waterloo Titans warming up for what St. John's Edge fans hope will be the last time. Every time this team has come here to mile one, the Edge have defeated them. They're hoping to do that tonight and once again go into the playoffs. Have that coverage for you tonight throughout here and now. But let's head back and start the news with Carolyn Stokes in the CBCNL newsroom. Thanks, Anthony. And we start tonight by looking back at the career of a prominent and high profile union leader. Leo Puddister died yesterday at the Health Sciences Centre. He was the once the leader of NAEP, the province's largest union. But long before he took the reins, he was involved in labor activism on behalf of cor correctional officers he represented. That's where he got his start. Here and now, Stephen Miller looks back at Puddister's career and legacy. Leo Puttister was always known for making an impression. In a province known for its colorful characters, the former leader of NAEP stands out. Not just for his larger-than-life persona, but his fierce advocacy for the province and its people. Leo uh, sort of came across as being a very tough uh, individual, but uh, people who knew him knew that he was basically a very sensitive individual, very kind-hearted. His 2000 stay at Her Majesty's Penitentiary has become the stuff of legend. Puttister earned a four-month sentence for defying a court injunction while negotiating on behalf of the province's prison guards, the very same guards who would be responsible for him at the prison. But Puttister was catching eyes long before then. Leo just started working at the penitentiary, and he'd be out on the road uh, hitchhiking with his prison uniform on, you know, which was uh, a novelty in Bay Bulls in the early 60s. He also caught eyes in 2004, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with former Premier Danny Williams during the NAEP Cube strike. They will be out till the cows come home if they go near any members of our family. Disappointing, Danny. Disappointing. Yeah, I know, but they're still outstanding. Oh, they're still outstanding. Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. After the strike, he and Williams found common ground. I fell into a burning ring of fire. Puttister was very passionate about his Irish roots. He also worked as a music promoter, bringing Irish acts to the province, something he often collaborated with friends to achieve. He brought a lot to this province. He made a great contribution, and he did it in his own unique and very colorful way. And you know, Newfoundland's been famous for characters. We probably don't produce as many characters now as we used to, but in my mind, when you think of characters of Newfoundland and Labrador, I will put Leo up towards the top of the list for sure, if not at the top of the list, and in a good way. Despite living life in the public eye, family was always a priority for Puttister. He had two daughters with his wife Bernie, a school teacher. It was very important to Leo that they get a good education and are well educated. Chris is a veterinarian, Leo has a PhD, so uh, he, uh, he certainly uh, was dedicated to his wife and his children and his grandchildren as well. Right? But Puttister always had time for others as well, and loved being among the people. If you visited the Avalon Mall during his later years, you probably remember him. Jet black hair, lots of gold jewelry. He had his own table at the top of the escalators, and he was always talking to someone. Stephen Miller, CBC News, St. John's. Well, she's one of the greatest Canadians to ever hit the ice. Caitlin Osmond is the country's most decorated female single skater ever. And as we told you last night, she's now hanging up her competitive skates for good and retiring. At the age of 23, she got a gold medal world championship, gold at the 2018 World Championships, and she has three Olympic medals. Today, Osmond gave her first interviews about why she's making the decision to retire from competitive skating and why she wants to set up a skating camp here in this province. I, I feel really good. Um, my career, it was a roller coaster. It wasn't always an up. And, but I was able to finish my last two years um, the, exactly the way I wanted to. And being able to finish my competitive career standing on top of a podium, um, there's nothing that could have worked out better. <laughs> um, 23 is actually getting a little bit old. 
in the figure skating world. Um, I was 22 at my Olymp at the last Olympics, and I was one of the I was the fifth oldest actually in the event. Uh, so our lifespans are a little young, um, but for me, it was a, just a personal decision. I actually want to develop skating in Newfoundland. Um, Newfoundland is where I started, and they've always been amazing supporters for me, and I want to be able to give back, and I feel like Newfoundland is a great place to start for me. Uh, so I'm actually starting a series of camps that will be uh, kind of a reward-based thing, uh, so there'll be a scholarship at the end of it for a week. Um, so yeah, that's a small little thing that I'm working on, but I'll know more in a couple weeks. <laughs> Well, now to news from the courts. Lawyers gave final arguments today at the trial of a Paradise man facing dangerous driving and forcible confinement charges. Joshua Steele Young's ex-girlfriend Morgan Party was paralyzed from the waist down after the car he was driving crashed off Pitts Memorial Drive two years ago. Here now's Mark Quinn has more. Both 23-year-old Steele Young and Morgan Party agree. They had recently broken up and were having a vicious argument as his car sped down the snowy highway in 2017. Police estimate the car was going 130 before it crashed and rolled. Party was thrown from the car. Her spine was so badly injured that two years later, she's still unable to walk and uses a wheelchair. Steele Young is facing charges of dangerous driving, causing bodily harm and forcible confinement. Crown lawyer Jennifer Lundergan says it's Steele Young's driving that caused Party's injuries. But Steele Young testified the crash happened after Party pushed his elbow. His lawyer Randy Piercy says the push on the arm from Party severed the link between Steele Young's driving and the bodily harm the crash caused. But Party's lawyer disputes that there was a push from Party that caused the crash. Lundergan said, quote, it doesn't make sense that you would push someone's arm when their driving was terrifying you. Their testimonies regarding confinement also differ. Party testified she was frightened by Steele Young's erratic driving. Lundergan said, quote, she was terrified and screamed, let me out of the effing car, but he refused to do it. But Steele Young testified Party never asked him once to let her out of the car. Piercy said, quote, the Crown has to establish that she asked to get out, and he refused. Justice Frances Knickle is scheduled to give her decision in late July. Mark Quinn, CBC News, St. John's. Well, this week, here and now, caught an interesting moment on camera. Two election candidates showed up at the same door at the same time, a face-to-face -face debate with a voter caught in the middle. Terry Roberts takes this look at the district of Mount Sio, where the political stakes are high. Wayne Hobbs of Lark Hall Street was enjoying his morning cigarette. Didn't expect to be treated to his very own political debate. I want to help make sure that Newfoundland, we have a plan in place for when that comes in. And, and But watch your plan. Well, your, I, so My grandson, who turned two yes. years old yesterday, is going to be. Here's Liberal years candidate old. and political Maybe newcomer Sarah Studley. That. Describes herself as a technology and business leader. Believes she has one more thing in her favor. Well, I That's think right. actually the most important reason to vote for me in Mount Sio is because I live in the district. And as far as I'm aware, none of the other candidates live in the district. So. Her debating opponent is Graydon Pelly, leader of the Upstart NL Alliance a former candidate and strategist with the PCs. He's campaigning a long way from his home in Deer Lake. But living in a district don't make you the best representative for the people. Mount Sio is one of five districts where there won't be an incumbent on the ballot, and four candidates are looking to muscle their way into the legislature. With the Dale Kirby political era now over, it's a battleground district, one the Liberals want to take back. The NL Alliance hope to make it a foothold. The Tory strategy is clear. They're betting big on St. John's area seats. Meanwhile, NDP candidate Jason Mercer has been slow out of the gate. We were working with a, a shoestring budget. It's an earnest campaign that stretches from a section of paradise to the university. Voters concerned about Muskrat Falls and electricity rates, the economy, 
jobs and health care. In the last six months, we've uh, looked at houses in the district. We're moving in Well, here. that's great that anyway. you've looked at houses in the district. I live in the district. As for Studley's claim to be the only candidate who lives in the district, the NDP candidate has something to say about that. Well, that is not true. I've uh, lived here my whole life and intend on spending the rest of my days here too. This doorstep debate may have helped overcome some voter apathy in Mount Sile. Wayne Hobbs says he now plans to vote. You've said earlier you probably will not vote, but did uh, this experience here this morning maybe yeah. convince you that maybe you will go vote? Yeah, I probably will. Terry Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Well, leaders of all four parties met in Gander last night for the third straight night of debates. But this time, the opponents found some common ground on a huge question. Here now's Garrett Berry took it all in last night and joins us now live. So, Garrett, did any sparks fly at that debate? Very few. Perhaps Graydon Pelly left some of his bite on the campaign trail in Mount Sio in that piece we just heard because it was uh, a pretty comfortable and uh, a, a not very contentious experience here last night. Maybe it was the intimate format, no real back and forth, but there was one eye-opening minute when PC leader Chess Grosby actually complimented Dwight Ball for their shared approach to dealing with a big proposal that would fatten municipal government wallets. <laughs> I was relieved to see the rules of this conversation forbid personal attacks, uh, but they don't, uh, they don't forbid paying a compliment. Well, that's different. Instead of the bickering, on the issue of more money for town councils, they agree. The answer is no. That is very difficult to be able to do this. No. We're not in a fiscal position as a province. And no again. Uh, we can get air and say yes, 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 but how, then the next question is, well, how are you going to pay for it? But at last night's Leaders Forum, one guess. And this valleys are in tune with their, uh, their residents. They know the services that are needed, and they know what needs to be done to make those services best available. Come up with some good things that we can write down. And it's a massive proposal. Take a slice of the income tax, a slice of the sales tax, and fork it over to municipal governments. It's millions out of the provincial treasury. But... That spread out over 500,000 people. In order to be able to raise that $3.7 million for my town that would come from that, I need to increase my mill rate by 56%. He says his job is getting bigger and bigger, and they can't push his one tool any further. In my town in particular, we're over 90% residential property taxes where we get our revenues. So to try and find an alternate source of revenue where we could ease that burden or at least not increase it anymore is very important. And every I think most municipalities are in the same boat. And the NDP agrees. So how does she propose the provincial government pay for it? $14 million going into a fund in Consolidated Fund Services for support of the Way Forward document. Perhaps we could use a little of that and put that directly in the hands of the municipalities. It's going, to be one, it's going to be a lot more than $14 million. I know, but that's a fine start now, isn't it? So you heard uh, Mayor of Torbay, Craig Scott, there. He did admit, of course, that the province is in a financial stretch. Really, everybody in this room last night saw that. So he knows that this change isn't going to happen anytime soon. But he said the municipalities have been asking for this for well over a decade, almost 18 years. So he says he's keeping up the fight because something has to move forward. Garrett Berry, CBC News, Gander. Well, a small town in central Newfoundland is pushing for a new pumper truck, saying their 36-year-old rig is a safety hazard. This 1983 Chevy serves as the only fire truck in Little Bay. It serves about 300 homes in the Green Bay area. The volunteer fire department has about 25 members. The chief says one person quit this week over safety concerns. The chief says the town was told years ago that a new pumper truck would require a new fire hose. So the company, the, co the community rather, built one, but still no truck. The mayor of nearby Beachside says the area was off a new rig a couple of years back, but they turned it down when they realized it was even older than their 83 Chevy. And how's this for a throwback? Here's a photo of that same truck back in its prime. This was taken when Cabinet Minister Tom Rideout first handed over the keys to the then, to the then Fire Chief Everett Pitts. The town says the truck is still rolling on those same tires. 
Well, if you come across a random bouquet of flowers in St. John's, it might be meant for you. In honor of National Flower Arranging Day, a local group wants to bring a smile to some unsuspecting faces. And what better way than with a cheerful note and a posy? Meg Roberts has more. On a cold and overcast day in St. John's, Corey Outer Bridge is leaving behind a splash of color. About 35 volunteers are dropping off more than 200 flower bouquets around the city just because. You know, it's all about sharing the little bit of uh, love and happiness through flowers. You know, studies have actually shown that, that flowers uh, uh, elicit a, an immediate, positive, emotional response. And, and that's really what it's about because everybody that get, gets a flower, the first thing they do is smile. The second thing organizers want people to do when they come across a bouquet is to post it on social media and tag the floral design group. The group says they often fall into hands of people who need them most. Oh, it's definitely smiles. I mean, you know, there's tears and then you're getting uh, stories of heartbreaking situations that those people might be in. And then suddenly we've put a ray of sunshine in their life so, so for the day. Guests at the St. John's Women's Centre help make bouquets with financial support from the Royal Bank of Canada. This is the fourth year the group has left the colourful bundles for an unexpected passerby. Every year the group creates and distributes more, but that's not what the organizer is concerned with. It doesn't matter the number because um, of the snowball effect because people pass them on. So these three guys that I just gave them to up to the gathering place, they may not keep them themselves. So now I brought them happiness, or we brought them happiness, and then they will bring somebody else happiness. So, As we wait for April's showers to bring May flowers, the Floral Design Group hopes in the meantime, this will brighten people's moods. Meg Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. That man you're looking at right there in the blue t-shirt, that's Des Lee, number five. We don't know if he's playing tonight. He's one of the reasons the St. John's Edge are on the verge of eliminating the Titans from Kitchener-Waterloo. We'll talk to the St. John's Edge coach right after the break.
This weather update is brought to you by the Healthcare Foundation Home Lottery. Early bird deadline is midnight tonight. Order now at hcfhomelottery.ca. weekend time and time to find out how the weather forecast is shaping up. So things are going to be fairly quiet actually for the next couple of days. Let's start with some headlines. We could see some scattered showers or flurries for the east and parts of central tonight. Tomorrow is looking mostly cloudy for much of the province. Fairly mild with temperatures if you're inland and for uh, Sunday looking at a chance of showers, some very, very light showers for some places. So let's have a closer look. Uh, here we are tonight. Uh, lots of cloud cover uh, for the island except for the west coast, which is looking nice and clear uh, this evening. But you can see a few little showers there, so it could get a bit misty, could turn into some flurries as well. Cloudy for Labrador with some uh, flurries moving in very late at night for Labrador. City. So temperature wise, this is what we're looking at on the island, looking at temperatures around the freezing mark. So could see some showers in the east there. Winds fairly strong, but on the west coast, things are nice and clear. Winds are light. So it's a beautiful evening here on the west coast. Crisp, but lovely. Uh, in Labrador, Cartwright is going to be a little bit messier. Uh, some showers and some flurries mixed in there overnight tonight and uh, some late night flurries, as I mentioned, for Labrador City. And as we get into Saturday, you can see some cloud cover uh, for the east on the island and those flurries continuing for Labrador West. But things are looking fairly nice. Here we are at noon tomorrow. Lots of uh, cloud cover, but some sunshine for the west coast there chance we could see a little shower or two. You can see that little speck there uh, on the Avalon Peninsula. So could see a little shower for Labrador, though. Better chance of showers throughout the day. Temperature wise, five degrees in St. John's tomorrow. A mostly cloudy day, a bit more clear on the southern part of the Avalon. Five degrees there as well. Cooler along the coast. 11 in Marystown tomorrow with a mix of sun and cloud. As we move into central, things warm up a little bit. Grand Falls, Windsor, nine degrees there. 2 degrees in Twillingate with a mostly cloudy day on the west coast of mix of sun and cloud for Corner Brook and Humber Valley 9 degrees there and winds continuing to stay very light there tomorrow so shaping up to be a, a nice day as we move up to the Straits very similar story it's pretty quiet as I said uh, a mix of sun and cloud for Mary's Harbor and 5 degrees as the high for the rest of Labrador cloudier skies along the coast and then we're looking at uh, that mix of flurries and showers for Labrador City and Churchill Falls Happy Valley Goose Bay could also see a little bit of that later on in the day. So quick look at Sunday. Uh, if Sunday is looking at the not so great actually compared to Saturday. Lots of cloud cover right across the province. Uh, Early in the morning, you can see the showers on the west coast and for Labrador. Moving through the day, those showers continue on the northern peninsula and start to move east. So if you're looking at uh, deciding on which day you're going to head outdoors and, and do some activities, Saturday is looking like the better day right now. So that's your forecast. I'll have a closer look at the long range coming up a bit later. Anthony? Standing courtside here live at mile one with the head coach of the St. John's Ed, Steve Marcus, who's working up a bit of a sweat, warming up with the team. How are you feeling? Big game tonight. Yeah, we're excited. We're ready to go. You know, we put in the work, the, the film work, the on-court stuff, and our guys are ready to go. We're chomping at the bit, ready to play. All right, as you know, uh, you get in the playoffs, some players get injured. Right. Uh, some questions about a guy who's been a, a really valuable player. Right. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Desley, yeah. any decision? He just warmed up just now. He's been getting some treatment with our medical team uh, pregame. Uh, all signs point to him playing, but uh, we'll know more in about 10, 15 minutes, but I think he's going to go. So how do, how do you make a decision like that? I didn't realize it came, yeah. when it comes game time, you guys mean game time. Yeah, no, it's 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 ultimately up to Dez. You know, we're not going to push his body uh, to a limit that it can't go, but uh, he's a guy that's a warrior. That You know, he's our heartbeat on and off the court, and um, you know, our medical team assessed him today a shoot-around, and they're doing it again right now before uh, for a tip off, but I think I think he's going to go. All right, so that question is really for a hardcore Edge fans who can't be here tonight. Right. Got a bigger question for you, and it really has more to do with the home court sure. and the fans in this building. As you well know in this series, yeah. it seems when you play here, you win. When right. you go away, not so successful. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about home court advantage. Yeah, I think it's why you play the regular season. You know, you play those 40 games and you, and you battle for positioning, and you know, we were fortunate enough to finish in second place and get us home court. You know, in the first round, and then KW beat the one seed, which gave us home court in the second round. So it's, you know, every game's important, you know, one through 40 in the regular season. And then 
uh, you know, here in the playoffs, um, it's a it's a great it's a great tool to have to, to be able to play at home and in front of the best fans in the league. So we're, we're ready to go. Even for people, Steve, or moderate sports fans, the amazing story about this team is here you are, second year in the franchise, dangling the possibility of being the playoffs for the second. I mean, it's a it's remarkable. Yeah, no, it's it's a testament to our ownership group, to our front office, uh, to our players, and, and to the fans here in the city that. You know, two years ago came in, it might have been a hockey town, and I think we've uh, helped transform it a little bit into a basketball city. Right. All right, obviously nervous. You must yeah, be, right? Yeah. How close How close to vomiting did you no, come tonight? Not, never never that, uh, but obviously nerves are good. I, you know, if, if you didn't have nerves, there'd be something wrong with you. Um, they're exciting. It's exciting nerves, um, but I'm just ready for that, that ball to go up, and uh, hopefully the, we score one more point than they do. All right, in which case, Keep our fingers crossed. We could see in the playoffs. Anything you change about the way you face the uh, the Titans so far? No, I think you know all, all the schemes are kind of out the window. It's just going to be out who who can execute better and uh, you know who can kind of stay off the referees and, and just play basketball and not let the other stuff outside of it affect us. And we did that in Game Five and put together 48 minutes of great basketball. And okay. I think we're going to do the same thing tonight. Well, listen, good luck. I know everybody in the province is cheering for you. Uh, all the best. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, that's Steve Marcus. We'll count down to game time. Of course, basketball, not the only sport that people in Newfoundland and Labrador are cheering on. There's also hockey. Carolyn. Thanks, Anthony. Yes, the Growlers are also one win away from moving on to the next round. Here's the team at today's practice skate in New Hampshire. The Growlers are leading the series 3-1 to one against the Manchester Monarchs and could take it tonight with a win. The game starts at 8.30 Newfoundland time. It's unique to Newfoundland, so I thought maybe try it. I'm hoping it will take away some more Indian the curry meets seal. We see the Newfoundland Indian fusion next.
Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, let's head to Corner Brook now, where students rallied today for better climate change awareness. About 20 students lined West Street holding signs and cheering at passing cars. Many high school and university students also visited politicians' offices to share their frustrations with the lack of public information around climate change. The rally stems from the School Strike for Climate movement that's taken place at hundreds of schools across the globe. Well, do you like Indian food? Maybe a nice flavorful curry? Well, how about some seal curry? That's what's on the menu this evening at the Indian Express food truck in St. John's. Here in now's Todd O'Brien has been following this delicious story all day. This is where it all begins. Jerry Joy is best known for his butter chicken, selling it out of his food truck around town. But today, something different. So we have the seal meat here. I have uh, trimmed it from the bone and it's been sitting in um, a vinegar and turmeric bath. So I'm hoping it will take some of the gaminess from it. After soaking overnight, and the seal uh, is so just about cool. ready. But first, Jerry Joy needs to make his curry. Cumin, cardamom, bay leaves, cloves and cinnamon sticks to begin with. Next, let's uh, add some uh, chopped ginger, garlic. Jerry began cooking when he was 17, studying engineering in Singapore. When growing up in India, mostly the boys are not even allowed in the kitchen. So that's not the thing, but I always loved food. And uh, I think my love for food drew me to cooking. After meeting his future wife, it was on to Dublin and then Newfoundland nine years ago. He loves experimenting with food. We make curry out of everything. So I thought seal is a, an interesting meat to work with. Uh, it's unique to Newfoundland, so I thought maybe try it. So I, I actually want to try every kind of meat. There are many ingredients to a good curry. Jerry is looking for the perfect balance, something that will complement the meat. Coriander powder. We roast it here, we grind it here. Ah, it. Soon, it's time for the seal. This is 20 flippers. I want to try with a small amount first. If it's a hit, definitely more is going to come. The proof is in the pudding, or rather, the food truck. It's four o'clock and customers have been waiting. That's delicious. Wow, it's delicious. Two good reviews. Great. It's likely curried seal will be back on the menu. Todd O'Brien, CBC News, St. John's.
Welcome back. Well, one of the biggest breweries in the Maritimes is coming under fire for a controversial campaign slogan on Prince Edward Island, one that reads, quote, asking forgiveness, not permission, since 1937. But as Brittany Spencer reports, Moosehead Breweries is now changing its tune. The petition started after photos of Alpine banners at a Charlottetown bar started circulating on social media yesterday. It wasn't long before hundreds had signed the online petition calling for the ads to be removed, which prompted Moosehead Breweries to do just that. The banners feature an Alpine logo and the phrase asking forgiveness, not permission since 1937. Those who signed the petition felt that made light of the issue of consent. They felt it was an irresponsible message, especially for the alcohol industry. The manager at Hunter's Ale House, where the banners hung, says it was Moosehead staff that put them up. He didn't see them until he got into work Thursday morning. He says as soon as he did, he took them down immediately and apologized on social media. A spokesperson for Moosehead Brewery says the banners were put up at Hunter's by mistake. The company says the ad campaign has been around for several years but wasn't being used anymore. The phrase refers to taking risks to succeed in business, like the creator of Alpine Lager did in 1937. But Moosehead says it does see how some people might get a different message, and that's why it's pulling the ad. Based on the clear feedback that we have received from our fans and customers today, Alpine will no longer be using this line, and we're working immediately to remove it from anywhere that it's in use. Moosehead Breweries has also removed the material from its website. Those behind the petition say they're thrilled to see how quickly the brewery responded to their concerns. They say those in the beer and alcohol industry should be promoting permission, not forgiveness. Brittany Spencer, CBC News, Charlottetown. Well, the district of Mount Sio in St. John's is shaping up to be a tight race in this election. There's no incumbent MHA since Dale, Dale Kirby has left politics, so it could be a four-way race between all of the parties. As our Terry Roberts was gathering material for the story we showed you earlier tonight, he captured a scene where two candidates showed up on a doorstep at the same time. Now, it certainly was not planned, and neither was the ensuing debate. Have a look. Well, I think actually the most important reason to vote for me in Mount Sio is because I live in the district. And as far as I'm aware, none of the other candidates live in the district. The, the, the missing point in this debate is that none of the candidates or the leaders uh, of, the, of the traditional parties have been willing to talk about our debt. Yeah. Newfoundland and Labrador is going in debt. We are borrowing billions of dollars every year just to service our debt. I'm going to be 55 when the Churchill Falls money starts coming in. And that's five elections away. And I really want to see, a, I want to help make sure that Newfoundland, we have a plan in place for when that comes in. And, and But what's your plan? Well, your, I, so My grandson, who turned two yes. years old yesterday, is going to be 50 years old when he is able, we are able to negotiate the new Atlantic Accord again. My grandson's going to be 50 years old. Well, no, but we can renegotiate the Atlantic Accord, and I'm not an expert on it because this is my third week in politics, right? Sarah, um, it has no reopening clause. It has no renegotiation clause. So we cannot I've, open it. I have not read the agreement myself, so well, I Well, I I'm <laughs> suggesting that you sit yes, down and I read will. the agreement. Yes, I will, yes, yes. Because people want to know that yes. the truth, and the problem is Mr. Ball has gone through all of this process. He is not at a guarantee of $200 million. Uh, we have no renegotiation clause in the in the Atlantic Accord. And people yeah. like this gentleman here needs to know that when government tells them something, yeah. it's absolute truth. It's documented, well, and it's doors, not truth if it's not documented. Well, at the doors, so things that uh, constituents or, or residents of Mount Sio have, have been telling me, because I, I live in the district, you know, so I really care about what everyone, you know, their feedback. Um, I'm hearing, you know, they're concerned about rate mitigation for Muskrat Falls. They're concerned about a growing what's economy. Mis what's rate mitigation and, and plan? So the rate mitigation plan, the increase in the kilowatt hour, I calculated my personal power rate increase would be 15%. I need you to find out for me, and I would okay. love the opportunity. Okay. Has the federal government written a document and said, we are guaranteeing this $200 million? Well, they said it publicly, which is, is you know, yes. I, I haven't seen the written document, and I wouldn't because I'm a candidate. Well, I think Newfoundland Labrador Dorians want to see more women in politics. 
Um, so, you know, I'm 33. Absolutely. I live in the district. Absolutely. I'm the only candidate that I'm aware of in our district who actually lives in the district. Now, that's three um, times you said that, yep. but does that make you the best candidate well, for the I district? Well, I think a lot of the constituents and residents Four of my I've five children to, live in the district. My grandchildren, my in-laws. That is very important to I them. have hundreds of friends. And I'm look, I, in the last six months, we've uh, looked at houses in the district. We're moving in well, here. Well, that's great that anyway. you've looked at houses in the district. I live in the district. I've awesome. lived here for five years. And if that's important to residents, I think that they should have that information. The reason I decided I could no longer uh, be involved in the, with the party system as it stands today is because it does not represent the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's about the party. It's about doing what the party says, or if you don't agree, you're out. If you don't agree with what the premier says, you're out of cabinet, you're out of caucus. Well, turning now to uh, national news, provincial leaders from across the country had their eyes on a Saskatchewan court today. It was weighing whether a federally imposed carbon tax is constitutional. It made its ruling this afternoon a split decision in favor of Ottawa. So, I mean, we're very pleased with this decision, but I think more importantly, we would be pleased if conservative politicians joined us that it no longer became a partisan issue to take serious action on climate change. And because that, everyone will be better off. All Canadians will be better off. Obviously, I'm disappointed with today's ruling, but it is only one step in the battle against the Trudeau carbon tax. We will be closely reviewing today's ruling, and it will be appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada. Several other provinces are also in a fight with Ottawa over the carbon tax. They include Ontario, Manitoba and New Brunswick. Alberta's new premier, Jason Kenney, says scrapping his province's carbon pricing plan is high on his agenda. And the fight against the carbon tax was one of the key topics of discussion today between Alberta's new Conservative Premier and his Ontario counterpart. And afterwards, Jason Kenney made it clear there are just two among a growing rank of provincial allies. We have a great alliance between Alberta and Ontario, uh, joined by Saskatchewan, Manitoba, New Brunswick, and now Prince Edward Island. We've got a majority of provinces and territories who want... Uh, jobs who want uh, to get our energy to markets who oppose the job killing carbon tax so uh, that's why i'm here in the very first uh, week as as uh, premier of alberta well, during their hour-long meeting kenny also thanked doug ford for his ongoing support for pipelines kenny told the ontario premier he appreciates his open for business message a mantra used by both premiers When you sit this close to those players, you get splashed with sweat. These seats are for the diehards. We're going to meet some of the fans who hope the edge will beat the Titans. That's coming up.
time now for a look at the long range forecast, starting with a quick recap of what's going to be happening in the province tomorrow on the island. Looking fairly nice, a mainly cloudy day for most. Nine degrees in Grand Falls, Windsor, two degrees in Porter Basque. So as you move inland, it's a bit warmer, cooler along the coast. For Labrador, very similar story, mainly cloudy day for Happy Valley Goose Bay and Cartwright and some uh, showers and uh, some flurries for Lab City. Winds very light there. Uh, continuing on now, it's Saturday night. This is when things get a little bit messier. Uh, lots of cloud cover for the island and for Labrador. You can see all these little darts of showers, depending on the temperature at the time, could be flurries as well along the northern peninsula and uh, moving east. The northeast coast could see some of that too. Uh, and uh, the north and even the Avalon Peninsula looking at uh, 2 p.m. on Sunday could see a few showers in St. John's and some flurries along the coast of Labrador. So continuing on uh, into Sunday, temperature wise, things are looking a little bit better actually than Saturday. but. Again, we could see those showers, nine degrees in St. John's with a chance of showers, a better chance of showers for Grand Falls, Windsor and Gander, a cloudier day there. Gra Corner Brook looking at uh, that messy mix of showers and flurries as well, but getting up to seven degrees throughout the day. Lab City, things clear off nicely, six degrees there on Sunday. So looking farther ahead, a uh, Monday morning, very clear, sunny day for most of the island. So Monday's looking like a great day, unfortunately, is when we all go back to work. Uh, and we have some showers pushing through Labrador, starting off with showers and then turning into some flurries uh, later on Monday evening. Tuesday overnight, we start to see some uh, showers on the island Tuesday afternoon and uh, some flurries along the coast continuing on uh, into Wednesday afternoon. Some heavier showers expected for the east coast, northeast coast, and some flurries there for uh, the, the southeast coast of Labrador. So here's your five day forecast. As I mentioned, Monday is looking pretty good. Seven degrees as the high in the east. Cloudier day on Tuesday and then that rain moving in on Wednesday with six degrees as the high for central areas. Very similar Monday. 13 degrees with a mix of sun and cloud, six degrees on Tuesday. And again, those showers moving in on Wednesday for the West Coast, 13 sun and cloud on Monday. And uh, then we get into that shower pattern for a couple of days in Labrador. Monday is looking pretty good in the east as well. And then we have that mix of uh, showers and flurries uh, coming through and for the West. Similar story, except Monday is looking a little bit rainier. Temperatures between four and five degrees for those days there. And uh, then we get into that pattern once again of the flurries and the showers. So that's your weather forecast. Anthony, back to you. All right, you're looking at the teams with only 10 minutes to go before the St. John's Edge and the Kitchener Waterloo Titans face off. The basketball's aren't the only performers. Vera Greeley here is going to be singing the national anthem. Hey, Vera. Hi. Yeah. Not bad. So how are you feeling tonight? I'm super excited. I um, really want the edge to win and go to the finals. All right. Now, people think that the players are the only nervous people. How do you feel doing the national anthem at a game like this? Um, I'm a bit nervous. It's more people than I'm used to. It's pretty sold out, I heard. So sweaty palms. All right. So you're a big <laughs> basketball fan? Um, I loved it since I started coming. I really got really into it. I love Baby Davis, and I'm pumped for tonight. All right, big Beggy B. Davis, of course, a big uh, fan, draw for a lot of people. Now, Sarah, Vera's friend, this is your first game? Yes, this is my first edge game. Well, why would you want to come to a basketball game? The first game is we're in the end of the playoffs almost. Uh, well, this is the first chance, really, that I've gotten to go. I'm here to show some support, and uh, hopefully I'm going to love it. <laughs> All right, well, enjoy the game. Thank you. All right, and sitting next to me here, i got Paul. How are you doing, Paul? Good evening. Now, you're a hockey fan. Yes. So what are you, what are you doing here? Uh, I actually... I'm a sports fan in general, so tiddlywinks ending. Tiddlywinks. Right the house. <laughs> <laughs> I love sports, and uh, this is a good product. It's a, it's a good game. Now, when you decided you were going to actually become a, a basketball fan, were you surprised by how much you started to actually enjoy it here? Yeah, uh, I, I think my first game was in the uh, end of January. I was up in the corner, and then the last few games, center. It's a lot of action. There's a good flow to it. It's, it's very entertaining. Yeah, and, the price is right. and the price is good. It's faster. Also, something about basketball, if you just sort of take a look around us as we sort of pan around looking at mile one, 
it's very intimate. You're very close to the action almost no matter where you sit here. Yes, absolutely. There's not a bad seat in Mile One, right? Yeah. And it's great for the economy. So, you know, I think it's great for uh, City of St. John's. Yeah, certainly none of the restaurants and the bars and all the other business downtown love seeing all these people show up. And I think we'll be packed tonight. What's your prediction? Obviously, the edge have the edge. How many times do you use that joke? Uh, when they're playing a Mile One, right? Not so lucky when they go to the mainland. So is tonight do or die? Uh, it's a big night because we're, we got a lot of injuries too. So you know we probably have a short bench there tonight, but I think I think they're going to do it tonight. Right. I know a star player uh, was supposed to start tonight. Des uh, Des Lee, the coach we're talking to him said he might might start, might not. He wasn't quite sure yet. How important is he to this a win tonight? He, he's a he's a good guard. He carries the ball well. He brings it off off the court. Right. right. Yeah. So and uh, it's great to see Carol Lewis back too. And Pardon? He, it's great to see yeah. Carol Lewis back. He's hurting a little bit, but he is, it's just a. It's great to see him play before he ends his career. Yeah, and certainly a big draw for a lot of fans who've actually helped this franchise, Carl English. Listen, I'm going to let you go and enjoy the game, and thanks a lot for your time. Thanks very much. All right, so uh, Vera here will be getting ready to do the national anthem and all that, and uh, I guess it's easy when you only have to do Canada's national anthem, and you don't have to do the American one, right? Yeah, I only have to do the American for the Growlers game, so it's a bit easier tonight. You can save your breath and pour your energy all into one performance. Yeah, just one this time. All right, good luck. Thank you so much. All right, it's getting pretty action-packed around here. The seats are filling up. Going to be quite the game, which starts in uh, eight minutes. Carolyn? Wow, we'll keep our fingers crossed for the hometown team for sure. Thanks so much, Anthony. Well, turning now to other sports news, worries about student safety have led to a ban on rugby in Nova Scotia high schools, and that's caught players by surprise. It was truly the only reason I did not drop out because if I dropped out, I couldn't play rugby. So I stayed in rugby so I could. I stayed in high school just so I could play rugby. Players protested outside the Halifax Convention Center today, where the Provincial School Athletic Federation was meeting. The federation says it issued the ban based on injuries revealed by insurance data. It says rugby players made three times as many insurance claims as soccer, football, or hockey players over a five year period. Well, there is a major development in the worldwide fight against AIDS. A European study has found what scientists call conclusive proof that drugs prevent transmission of the AIDS virus, HIV. Researchers had strong evidence before, but this study settles any doubts. Doctors say it makes clear that AIDS may one day become a thing of the past. This certainly uh, is an extremely helpful piece of information. Uh, that will be a major uh, factor in uh, in really uh, enabling the the elimination of HIV on Earth. International headlines expressed the significance of the study, calling the results an AIDS breakthrough and declaring end to AIDS in sight. The study followed nearly 1,000 couples of gay men who had unprotected sex. One of the men in each couple had HIV and was taking anti antiretroviral drugs to suppress it. After eight years, none of the HIV positive men infected his partner.
birthday and anniversary greetings is brought to you by Lane's Retirement Living. With a pool, cinema, and chef-prepared meals, everyone wants in. Reserve your suite today. Happy 50th anniversary tomorrow to Aiden and Gloria Noonan from Beta Verde. Wishing Isaac and Mary Morgan of Seal Cove, CBS, a happy 67th anniversary. They celebrated on April 26th. And happy 50th wedding anniversary today to Neil and Marie Reddy of Corner Brook. Also celebrating a golden anniversary are Lena and Harold Snow of Wings Point Gander Bay. Congratulations. Happy 69th anniversary to Tom and Phyllis Cutler of Wareham. They celebrated yesterday. Annie and Russell Avery of Deep Bite, now living in Clarenville, celebrated 67 years of marriage on April 29th. Congra congratulations to you. And congratulations also to Peg and Stan O'Brien of Fairyland. They're celebrating their 50th anniversary. Congratulations, Jim and Lily Budgel of La Cie. It's their 55th wedding anniversary. Happy birthday to Rita Rideout, who celebrated her 90th birthday on April 29th. Greetings to Annie and Kareen, uh, Annie Kareen, rather, who is celebrating her 90th birthday tomorrow. She still lives at her home in Point Lance. Happy 95th birthday today to Blanche Hutchings of Mobile. Happy 99th birthday to Hetty Guy from Twillingate, who will celebrate on Sunday. Happy 95th birthday tomorrow to Donald Jewer from Botwood, now living in Gander. Happy 50th anniversary today to Kevin and Jean Power of Placentia, now living in St. John's. Anniversary greetings going out to Utley and Maggie Brake of Meadows, now living in Corner Brook. They are celebrating 60 years of marriage. Happy birthday to Neil Austin in Springdale. It's his 93rd birthday tomorrow. And happy 59th anniversary to Enid and Zach Daw of Long Pond. All right, I know we only have about 30 seconds. I'm with Tim May. Tim May. You're a big super fan. Very quickly, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. I think we're going to do well tonight. Really? Who's going to win? Oh, it'll be a tough game, but with all these great fans around, I'm sure the Edge are going to pull it off. All right. How's your heart beating? Overdrive. Overdrive? Overdrive. I can feel it in my hand. Are you going to be okay? Oh, I'm never better. All right, listen, enjoy the game. You too, Anthony. All Thanks right. a lot. There you go. Pretty pumped here. Everybody's <laughs> hearts are beating, Carolyn. <laughs> I stick around and watch this. Have a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Anthony, and to all of you at home, have a great weekend as well. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on Monday. And as we head out, we're going to have a look at uh, downtown St. John's from the room's camera. Lovely night in St. John's tonight, and a nice day coming tomorrow as well. Some cloudy skies. Hope you enjoy your weekend.